We're going to look at installing and programming a high control radar level measurement transmitter on a standard silo holding a solid product. This solid product could be in the form of a powder, pellets, flakes, granules. Different types of products will have properties that we will need to consider during the programming stage. Firstly, we need to note key information about the silo. We need to know where it's filled from. This will be via a fill pipe in the top part of the vessel. We need to know where the silo draw-off point is. The radar must be mounted away from the fill pipe to avoid any false readings. The recommended positioning is about half radius to one third radius. This position gets a good average of the level of the product during the filling and emptying, which will both have a conical shape. In some cases, mounting the radar in a good location may be difficult. For example, you may be forced to put it closer to the edge of the silo. This could cause measurement problems, so a rotational aiming kit is recommended to aim the radar beam to the correct location. This may also help if the vessel has internal structures or if you need to target the bottom of the cone. Please note, for many applications, this is not required. Once the radar is positioned, we need to think about the parameters that we will input into the program and the milliamp output that it will provide. The radar provides a 4 to 20 milliamp loop signal and will usually go up to a digital display or a PLC where the information can be viewed. Setting the range covered by this 4 to 20 milliamp signal is key to an accurate reading. Typically 4 milliamps is empty and 20 milliamps is full. Firstly we must tell the radar what height the tank is then where the bottom of the measuring range is. In this video example, we will use an average silo measuring 40 feet in depth. Therefore, we will set the low four milliamp point at 40 feet. We then need to consider the position at which we will program the 20 milliamp for a full silo condition. We must think where the fill point is in relation to the probe and the profile of the product that will form underneath it during fill. While the pile of product will be approaching the very top of the silo close to the fill point, it will still be a distance away from the radar antenna. Setting the 20 milliamp span or 100% will ensure a good average of cone height across the measuring range and the vessel is not put at risk of overfilling. In this example, we will ensure that the 100% scale is three feet from the radar face. Therefore, this gives an output range of 37 feet from the bottom of the silo to its highest safe fill point. Different product types will peak, trough and rest in different ways in the silo. The angle of repose must be taken into consideration when programming. Fine powdery products like ash will generally have a steep slope. Better flowing granular products like sand will have a shallower angle. Some solids like plastics have very little resistance, flow very well and will usually rest virtually as a flat surface. Product like cement can be expected to have a medium to steep angle depending on how it is blown in. When the signal goes into the display unit, it can be converted to the required information, for example, a tonnage or any volume conversion. We will cover programming of the high control digital displays in a later video. Before programming the unit, take a moment to familiarize yourself with the display keypad buttons. These require a magnetic pen to use, or you can remove the lid with the special tool provided and press the buttons. The right arrow key enters program mode, submenus, and moves the cursor to the next digit. Return key confirms changes and exits the current menu. Finally, the up and down arrows change the display screen in run mode and increase or decrease the value in program mode. We're going to set the radar up for level measurement in feet and go through all of the programming needed to do this. Initially, when you power the device up, it will be metric measurement with 20 meters range. So we go into the parameters, quick setup menu into here. First of all, we need to give the application a name. So the device is on silo two, we will say, we need to enter the password. Password is 0058. Enter this and we can now change our tag name to the silo2. Enter this. 
and with our quick setup we can now go to our application assistant. So we want to do a standard setup. The unit length we now want to change to feet. Enter this. And as mentioned previously, we need to think about the material surface. So for example, cement, we would be thinking more of a medium slope. Option being flat, medium and steep. Enter this. And now we enter the tank height. So we're looking at an average silo of 40 feet. Enter this value. And we want our current output to be in level, so this is correct. And our output range, the bottom of the silo is set at 40 feet and at zero feet of level we will have 4 milliamps. So this is correct. And our 100% range, 20 milliamps, we need to now set this at a value less than 40 feet because of the angle of repose. So we will set this at 37 feet. Enter this. Our current output range is 4 to 20 milliamps. That's correct. And we need to set the output function should the device fail in some way. Options here are low, high or hold. For many applications we want to show a high output so that the silo isn't filled by accident. So this has done our standard setup and we can now continue back through the menus until we go back to run mode. Before we do that it's going to ask us if we want to save the configuration. We want to say yes. So we now have our tag has changed and our level is now showing the value in feet. Okay, so this is now set up for feet measurement of level in the silo.